Happy Halloween, everyone. Hey, it's Tish. Um, hope everyone has had a great day today. Um, I am here uh, for my fourth video talking about surgery. So surgery has happened. Um, it happened October 22nd, as you know. Um, and I am now in day seven, eight of recovery. Um, I want to thank everyone for you know, your phone calls, your texts, um, your visits, your gifts, your prayers, your prayers especially. This has been um, overwhelming, but it's been, um, I've been grateful and just really thankful to have everyone that has rallied around me and supported me and have just reached out to me and let me know that they're praying for me. And so I appreciate it. I thank you. I thank you a lot because it is a lot. It is a lot. Um, I go back to work tomorrow. But it's one of the downsides of starting a new job and something like this happens. So I'm going to do whatever I can to take it slow. I'm going to jump on my email tonight to just start that process of kind of dwindling the emails down. So tomorrow when I go in, so to speak, because I do work from home, um, I'll have a fresh email day and I won't be so overwhelmed with seven, eight days or plus of email exchanges and just kind of try to get back in slowly. But I do return back to work tomorrow. I would advise anyone, even if you work from home, to try and get at least two, three weeks off for this process because it is a lot. Um, last week I was extremely sore, highly fatigued, um, and it just takes a lot out of you. I'm still tired now. Um, I'm still sore now. Um, and you just need to rest. You just need to be able to just get comfortable with the process. Um, so I would suggest taking as much time off as possible with this process because you have to rest. You have to be able to get your mind around this and just understand the changes in your body. And there's doctor's appointments that you have to go to. So it is what it is. It's one of those things I'm praying that it'll work out. I'm praying that next, you know, this coming up week is not as daunting and as tiresome, but I already kind of know what what is ahead of me over this next from now to the end of the year it's just crazy at work right now um you can kind of see my size um i did get the tissue enhancers um and what the tissue enhancers do is basically they're a placeholder um if you You're not going to have reconstruction immediately like me. I'm not going to have reconstruction right now, or I didn't have reconstruction with the surgery. As I explained in one of my previous videos right now, even though the patients in the hospital and my doctors just didn't feel comfortable doing the reconstruction. They just didn't want me in the hospital this long, as long as it required. I stayed in the hospital one night and in this video, you'll see different clips of me going through the process, but it was an overnight stay. And um, reconstruction would have caused for a, lo a much longer stay, especially the type that I'm considering. So I did get tissue enhancers, and I'll try to um, insert a clip of what a tissue enhancer looks like, but what it feels like, um, actually I describe it as feeling like I am corseted in because the because the tissue the tissue enhancers go over the muscle they don't go under the muscle like they used to do they actually put them over the muscle and there are four points to each expander on each side um, that is connected um, that is holding you in place and so it's a really really weird feeling come it kind of almost feels like you're constantly in an underwire but I feel corseted in. Um, and so it's not comfortable um, laying down. It, 
for me, I just haven't been able to find a really comfortable position to just be in long term. Um, it just it's just really uncomfortable. Um, I will say that um, this is not <laughs> and having a double mastectomy or a mastectomy period, even if it's just one breast, it is not a breast reduction. So just to kind of give people some insight into the difference between a breast reduction and a mastectomy, because I've had a lot of people say to me, well, you know, you were going to get a breast reduction anyway, so you kind of got a free reduction. And originally I thought that, but as I began to kind of educate myself on this and now as I feel it, it is a clear difference between a breast reduction and a mastectomy. With a, with a breast reduction, you are reducing the size of the breast, right? So there is still breast tissue there. There's skin sparing, which means that they save your natural skin there is nipple sparing there is areola sparing there's nerve sparing with a breast reduction so at some point you will get the feeling back in your breast once your breast have been reduced you still have your original breast tissue you still have your nipple you still have your areola with a mastectomy <laughs> it is opposite of all of that. I had a skin sparing mastectomy, which means that they saved a portion of my skin so, so they can put over the tissue enhancers so whenever I do have a reduction, they don't have to take from another part of my skin. So I had a skin sparing mastectomy. But that's the only natural thing that I have at this point and going forward. I had a skin sparing double mastectomy. So on both sides, I have the tissue expanders. But with the mastectomy, all of your breast tissue is removed. You no longer have your own natural breast tissue. You do not have the nerves associated with that breast tissue. So that means that you don't even have feeling up here any longer. And you won't have feeling up here any longer. I do not have an areola. I do not have a nipple. So once I do get reconstruction, whether I use an implant or whether I use my own tissue, I'll still never have my original nipple. I won't have my areola. It'll be tattooed on if I choose to go that route. I won't have any nerves up there, so I won't have any feelings. So just be mindful when you're speaking with a family member or a friend who is going through this process or is going to go to this process and just really think about kind of what you're saying because it's not the same. It is not ever going to be the same for them. Um, the shape of their breast, even if they have a implant, is not going to be the same because there's no tissue up here to kind of hold that natural shape. I mean, they had to cut all the way here to me on both sides to remove breast tissue because I had breast tissue all the way in that area. So all of this is void of breast tissue. So I didn't have a breast reduction at all. Now, there are some people that do have lumpectomies with breast reductions. They still have all of those things that we talked about. But if they go and have a mastectomy, it isn't a breast reduction. You have now removed all natural parts and feelings of the breast. Um, with this, I'll say that on this side, which is the side that the cancer was on my left side, um, I do have like some tingling in my arm. Um, I don't have it as much in my right, but I do have it in my left. And um, that's where they were really making sure that they removed all of that breast tissue, the lymph nodes in that area, 
Um, and so there might have been some damage to some of the nerves muscles in that area. So I do have a tingling feeling and a sensation that runs from my wrist all the way up from the underarm to this area. Um, I don't have a lot of feeling um, in my underarm area. I have it from here. I have feeling here, but under my arm itself, I don't have any feeling. Um, I do have some, a little bit in my right underarm, but not a whole lot. It's, it's just numb. I'm just completely numb in that area. Um, so that's kind of where things are. Um, mentally, I am, I'm okay. I'm, I, I have my days and I would be lying if I'd said that I did not. But I have my days. Um, in this video, I have put clips in here. And if you are squeamish or you don't like to see certain things, I would click off towards the end or just kind of scroll past that. But I do show actually what my scars look like. Um, just so you can have an idea of the impact of what this surgery does to a woman's body. Um, to provide you with a little bit more empathy of what people are having to experience and what they're having to go through. Um, I do have my days. It took me a few days, honestly, to actually look at my scars. Uh, when I first, when I took my first shower and I had to take off all my dressings, I did not look at myself. I did not, I, I looked down and I took everything off and I attached my drains to my lanyard and I just got in the shower and showered the best that I could. I didn't even look at myself when I was showering. I couldn't. I wasn't ready. Um, but by the time I took my second shower, um, I did go ahead um, and just kind of glance at myself. And then that Saturday, yesterday... Um, and if y'all want to get into this to this fresh retie, because uh, I did get my hair retied this morning, um, it is growing and thriving. Get into that. Sorry, focus. focus. Um, yesterday I washed my hair because I had to go and get my hair retightened, my locks retightened this morning, and so I wanted to go ahead and wash my hair. And my plastic surgeon said that I could when I visited him Thursday. He said, please go ahead and please take a shower because by then I had only taken one shower. I told him I didn't want to take another shower until all my drains came out. He was like, nope, I need for you to take a shower. I need for you to allow those dead cells to get washed off. I don't want you scrubbing yourself. I don't want you using shower gel with beads in it and all these fragrances or little um, exfoliants. Just try to use as natural of a shower wash as possible but i want you to take a shower i want though that water that soap to wash over those areas that slopes off all of those dead cells and any type of you know just anything he said so go ahead and take a shower you can wash your hair i don't want crazy movements i don't want you lifting anything up over your head so i stayed in my hair and i had to plait my hair up um no crazy movements, but I want you to take a shower. So by the time I washed my hair yesterday, I did look at myself. I was by myself, um, and that was probably best. Um, and I just took a good long look at myself. And I looked at the angles and where everything was, um, and then I just looked at myself. Um, and I was okay. I was okay. Um, this is still just the first step in this process because I haven't received pathology back, so I don't know what my next steps are, but I haven't even done the reconstruction yet. This is just step one. So I needed to go ahead and get settled with step one. And so I'm there. Um, it's still a little different. No, <laughs> it's a whole lot of different. Um, but I am getting used to the new me because this is a life changer. This is 
a mind changer. This is a game changer. And so now I have to understand and how to navigate in this new place that I'm in and in this new body. Um, and it's going to be a while because I'm not even thinking about reconstruction until early next year. So I have to get used to these tissue expanders and how, how my body looks and wants the sutures, the staples dissolve and come out. Just that process. And then I'm going to have to go back and do this all again. And what will my body look like then based on the option that I choose, an implant or tissue or even going flat? That's that's part of my consideration. I go back and forth with that. Like, do I want to take my body through anything else? And so I have a lot of decisions to make. And people who are going through this have decisions to make. So give them grace. Give them grace. Let them talk through this process. Let them express how they're feeling. And just listen. Just listen. Um, one of the things that I do when people come to me and they're just talking or they're expressing themselves or they're venting or whatever, um, especially my employees, but um, some of my friends, I'll say, okay, so are you venting, expressing yourself, or are you trying to come to a solution? So that gives me an understanding of what direction I want to take my conversation with them in. And most times I can tell you right now, Anyone that's sharing anything with you, they're just looking to express themselves. They're just looking to vent. Um, they're probably not looking for a whole lot of solutions from you unless you've probably gone through this process or known someone that's gone through this process, but they're probably just expressing themselves. So allow, to, so allow them to do that. Allow them to live in the reality that they're in. Don't try and, you know, over-encourage them or over scripture them or or you know discourage any type of what may seem as negative talk to you or defeatist talk let them express that let them have that emotion let them get that off of themselves because if they can't tell you then they're keeping it inside they're not talking to anyone because they feel like they can't express themselves because people are shutting them down. Don't let them, don't do that. Just let them express themselves. And if you're not sure how you need to respond, then ask them. You know, just say, thank you for sharing that with me. Are you looking for a solution or are you just trying to vent? You know, something like that, but just, just be there. And sometimes silence is golden. Silence is all they need. Um, and just knowing that they have someone that, that will listen to them is enough. So enough of that, enough of that, uh, my, uh, soap box, um, uh, but y'all do need to still get into this really tight. It is cute. I, I guess cause I've looked like a bum. I've just looked worn down for the last seven days. I feel like today I look like a little bit like myself but um today is the last day of breast cancer awareness and i want to say that um if you have someone that is dealing with breast cancer surviving breast cancer fighting breast cancer this month is over for the rest of the world but but for them this is a daily walk you know, it's not over at the end of October. This journey still continues. The marathon continues. So just be mindful of that and be mindful of your support. Um, and just recognize that your support is needed all throughout this process. Even once they've rung that bell and they said that, that I'm cancer free, they'll still need your support because there's still visits and things that remind them you have cancer. Okay. You might be in remission, but there, there are visits, there are medicines that they take that remind them that they went through this process. So though today's the last day of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, just know that it's not over for those of us that are going through this journey. So I hope you enjoyed the rest of this video. I've inserted some clips leading up into surgery and after. And again, please, please remember to like this video, 
comment. I do want to interact with people. Share this video with others who you feel will be helpful to. And I hope to talk to you soon on my next video. Bye. Good morning, everyone. It's Tish. It's Thursday, um, October 21st. It's early in the morning. Um, I'm here at the hospital to take my COVID test. Probably just going to take you on the day with me because I have a busy day of hospital visits and work. I have to come back to the hospital this afternoon to get the Sentinel injection so i'm here right now to get the COVID test for the surgery tomorrow so hope everyone's having a good day talk to you later okay so finished up that um that took longer than what it should have because the phlebotomist or whomever was supposed to do the COVID test didn't show up to work today so the young lady that does the COVID test for the hospital staff had to come jump in and help do for patients that are pre-op. So I did my COVID test. She actually drew some blood for lab. She was like, I see that they have lab on here. So I'll go ahead and do that also. So I gave blood for lab. And so now I'm headed home to get started with work. Um, I have a couple of I have a full day of meetings today I'm gonna have to jump out of the last one to come back to the hospital but I got a couple of uh, M&A meetings today I have a, a senior leadership strategy meet meeting today and a demonstration for a new HCM system that we're looking at so I will talk to you later I need to head home and get me some breakfast I'm going light on my diet today because one of the things I do know is no, is that with anesthesia, um, when I have a full stomach or I have greasy foods or heavy or spicy foods and I had to have some type of anesthesia the next day, I tend to get nauseous and vomit after I come out of the anesthesia. So I'm going to take my diet light today. It's going to be... Um, I have a uh, smoothie drink that I have, so I'm going to have that for breakfast. And then I'll probably have some soup, um, probably a light sandwich with my soup for lunch, probably a salad for dinner, and then end my evening with some fruit, um, probably snack on fruit throughout the day. But just have it real light, nothing, nothing heavy, because I can't eat past midnight. And um, when I came today for it, they gave me my pre-op instructions and they gave me this soap that I have to use um, tonight when I bathe. Um, and then this soap here, you use half of the bottle tonight when I bathe, and then the rest of it in the morning before I come to the hospital. And it's to help prevent infections while you're in the hospital when you have surgery. So it's supposed to take any extra bacteria off of your body that could possibly make you susceptible to infections when they perform the surgery so I'll use half tonight and then the rest of it in the morning when I'm on my way back to the hospital for surgery so talk to you later back here at the hospital Thursday October 21st um, been it took forever to get here because there was an accident on the feeder off of 45 but I'm here, so I'm gonna run in here. This is probably going to be, I think an hour, hour long visit um, for the sentinel lobe injection. And what that is, is they will inject um, dye into the breast area so the physician can see the nodes, the, the, the sentinel nodes that will need to be removed for testing with pathology so um i was wondering why they didn't do it the morning of but they're having me come the day before um so they can do that procedure they're going to numb the breast um the needle should be about that big i'm from what i'm researched 
Um, so we'll see. And then I spent uh, a few hours of my day today tracking down test results to send um, because I had to have cardiologist clearance for the surgery because I see a cardiologist for AFib. So I had that, I had an EKG and an echogram done two weeks ago and they were supposed to send it to my surgeon and I got a call that they still hadn't received cardio clearance. And so I called and I was like, that should have been done two weeks ago. Come to find out they sent it to my general practitioner. Nowhere did I mention send it to my general practitioner. I gave them the name and information where they were supposed to send. So they said they'll take care of that. Woo! So I'm gonna go in here, get this done and go home. Well, no, I can't go home. I have to run to Walmart and find a, um, a Spider-Man costume for Halloween because I, I'll be down and I won't be able to do that. And he told me he wants a Spider-Man costume for Halloween because he's going to go hang out with some of his friends on Halloween. So I need to do that. I want to go ahead and take care of that. So that'll be over with and done. Um, and I think that's about it. Um, have a few more of the things I need to wrap up. Um, and I'll probably tomorrow. So talk to you later. Okay, that's done. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. Um, she actually did two injections. Um, and they just did it on the breast where the cancer cells are. So they did one right above the area and then another one right on the side. So like I said, it's like... Um, a needle about that long they do not numb the area they do not at all they don't numb it they don't cold compress it they don't do nothing so um, but it wasn't too bad you take a deep breath they poke you it's a burning sensation for a few seconds and then it kind of goes away at least for me I know she told me that different people have different different reactions. So one of the reasons why she explained that I'm doing it the day before as opposed to the morning of is because sometimes with like larger breasts, um, they want to make sure that it gets through the area so they can see it. And sometimes... Um, with larger breasts or in areas that are deeply embedded, like mine, so I'm both, they tend to do it the day before, so they'll have time by the time the surgery happens the following day for that dye or injection to move through to light that sentinel node area up. Because if it does not move through, it could delay the surgery. So my surgeon, prefers to do it the day before, especially if the person has larger breasts, more dense breasts, um, the cancer is found more deeply into the tissue. So she, so she does it the day before. Sometimes people do it the morning of their surgery. Sometimes people do it a few hours before their surgery, but I'm doing mine the day before. Like I said, it wasn't too bad. Um, and she was a really, a really nice nuclear tech. So um, it wasn't bad at all. The funny thing was, she was like, you know, Miss Petty, I don't see here on your chart where they um, did a pregnancy test. Is there any way that you're possibly pregnant? <laughs> girl, 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 girl. I told her, I said, that girl, now, come on now. <laughs> These eggs are powdered. No, no, no. <laughs> so we chuckled. She was like, well, you know, you just never know. Jenna Jackson had hers at 50. I don't care if she had hers at 86. Okay? No. No. It's not a chance. So we don't have to delay this to go do a, 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 
pregnancy test. <laughs> so that was done. So one step closer to surgery. Um, I just realized laying there, I was like, wow, like this is my last day actually with my breast. Um, and it hit me. It was like, today is the last day I'm going to see. I'm going to have my breast, my real breast. Um, that hit me laying there. But, uh, yeah, that's that was kind of, I don't know how, why that just came over me like that. But, um, yeah, so I am headed out the hospital and going to go run a few more errands and meet you back here tomorrow and uh have to be here at 5 a.m or 5 30 um but i'll get the final call as to what time to be here this evening um and my surgery time they're supposed to call me and give me that information so talk at you later good evening everyone it's tish it is thursday night almost 10 o'clock Wrapping up um, the evening, getting my stuff ready for tomorrow morning for surgery. I um, just finished wrapping up some emails, some last minute emails that I had to do and um, put my out of office on and got Nicholas straight and in the bed and talked with him, prayed with him for a while. Um, getting ready to take my bath. I just packed my overnight bag um, because the hospital called about an hour ago and told me the time to be there and the time of surgery and told me to bring an overnight bag just in case they keep me overnight. So let me just kind of show you the overnight bag and what I packed in it. So this is my bag, just your standard weekender bag. And what I have in here, um, hand sanitizer, chapstick, so I packed one of my chest pillows for the car ride home tomorrow or Saturday, um, packed me one of my devotionals that I read, um, got my wallet in here my container that keeps my masks in here um, though I don't plan on using it I've got my work phone um, my extra my my headphones that I use I got me some socks got my pouch to hold my drains in it got me some pajamas um, that button up in the front good thick flannel material not too too thick but it's enough underwear you need to see that um, toothbrush toothpaste my disinfectant wipes and then this is a abdominal pad and I'll actually use these um, they will already have some on the dressings over the surgical bra I mean under the surgical bra and they gave me an extra pack to keep um, just to give me a little bit more cushion on the surgical bra and then what else I got in here? Um, some hairpins because I can't have any jewelry or hairpins on tomorrow, but once I leave, I can. So that's just what I have in there. Pretty simple. Um, like I said, if I stay overnight, if I do stay, it'll be just overnight. So I didn't pack too, too much, just the bare necessities. I don't want to take too much up there because then that's more you have to 
disinfect and sanitize when you bring it back home. So I'm, I got lots of gifts, just lots of really thoughtful and useful things that people bought me. And I'm just very overwhelmed by everyone's kindness and generosity during this time. So I'm going to take these next few hours and just kind of chill out with my husband lay next to him for a little bit see if I can fall asleep for a few hours but tomorrow's surgery day at the hospital I have to be there at 6 30 surgery is at 8 30 a.m um it's supposed to be about six hours three hours per breast um the surgeon takes an hour and a half on one breast and then the plastic surgeon comes in and it takes about an hour and a half for his work on each breast so a total of six hours and then I'll be in recovery um, for an hour and then that's when they'll determine based on my vitals um, just how the whole process went if I need to stay overnight or not um, my cardiologist called today just to check on me and see how I'm feeling. And she strongly suggests that I stay overnight um, just for observation. But um, she says she'll leave it up to the surgeons to make the determination. But she was just calling to wish me well and to check on me. So um, I'm about to take my shower and uh, lay down. And talk to everybody tomorrow. Bye. So in this clip, you see, I am in the room that they brought me into once I checked in at 6.30 that morning. By this time, I've already undressed out of all my clothes. I'm in the hospital gown. They had come in and they checked my blood pressure, just checked different vitals. As you can see, I'm hooked up to the IV at this time. And I'm just resting and waiting for um, the plastic surgeon and the breast surgeon to come in but I'm just kind of relaxing, just taking in the room, getting ready for them to come in, and at some point, anesthesiology. The plastic surgeon and the breast surgeon have come in at this time. They actually had also um, started the process for anesthesia. As you can see, the marks that the plastic surgeon and breast surgeon have made up top. Since I'm having a double mastectomy, they have to mark both sides of the breast. I can't show you the whole thing, or I'll be showing you the last. Okay, in this clip, I am in my recovery room. I have already come out of recovery. This is the room that I stayed in overnight. You'll see the bandages there. Um, you see the bra that they have me in. Um, it is a drastic difference in what I had before I went in. Um, I'm showing you one of the drains there and it is actually four drains. Um, there are the different bandages that they have going across and down the breast area um, just to secure some of the um, drainage and protect the wound from where they remove the breast. Take two. Um, hey everyone, it's Tish. Um, it is Sunday, October 24th, and I am back home. Um, I had surgery on Friday and I was released from the hospital yesterday. Um, I can't remember the time I came home, but uh, it's probably mid afternoon. Um, I feel okay as expected. Uh, kind of see some of my dressings kind of peeking through. I just got up from a semi sort of nap, walking around, trying to just stay mobile for a little bit at a time, kind of swollen up here. Uh, I was about to come in and um, I used restroom and so I was about to change my drains. I was looking at them and they were looking a little full. So I have to change. I have to drain them. There are four drains. I put the fluids in this cup, measure it. Then I record it on the sheet that they give you, this log they give you. And you take it to the doctor so my first doctor's appointment will be on the 28th so that's what I was getting ready to do 
uh, pain level four or five. Um, I stay on rotation with the antibiotic in my I take Tylenol. I only took a hydrocodone codone once today. Um, I just want to stay really with the Tylenol. I had a little bit of a fever this morning when I first woke up. I think that was from the flu shot that I took yesterday at the hospital. Um, and then just fighting the infection, any type of infection maybe, I don't know. But um, just trying to walk around and move around. I don't like sitting around all day, laying around all day. I can't do that. Um, so I just stood up for a little while and get to take a shower tomorrow. So that's going to be interesting because I can't lift too much. Um, I can't get the front of the dressings um, wet. Um, well, I'll take them off and then just let the water, I can't get soap on them. So just let the water run off them. So I'll do that tomorrow when I take my shower. Um, got lots of products and stuff that they give you from the hospital. But I will make another video just to kind of chronicle things that I think would be helpful to people after you come home from surgery, you know, just some tips that I'm using to help things um, go easier for me. Um, because I know people want to help you. I know that they're here to help you and they want you, you know, to just take care of yourself and they want to be of help to you. But I think what people need to understand is that you, you, you still want some semblance of normalcy for yourself because your life has completely changed completely and not just for the few weeks people will be you know calling and checking in on you but forever and so just some helpful tips I'll share in another video for those um, that I find helpful especially since you can't really reach far um, some things that'll be helpful for you to do but just wanted to pop in and say hello and hope everyone is having a good day.